I want to start by saying I do not think there's such thing as a perfect wardrobe but in the past couple of years I felt really content with mine and in today's video I want to share with you seven habits I have adopted that kept my wardrobe refreshed and in a sense perfect whatever's on your laundry baskets what you have been wearing and what you gravitate towards on a legal basis and that says something about your personal style whether you want to believe it or not if what you gravitate to is a pair of sweatpants and a hoodie because you work from home something that's cozy that's gonna keep you warm while you're in the house comfortable enough to move around and be able to perform the job that you're doing maybe these pieces are bright and colorful and it brings you joy to put them on or like me you keep gravitating towards the same neutral and black tones because that's what you feel more comfortable in whatever the case is i think we all own pieces that form part of our personal style even if we don't know what that is yet once you've taken a look at those pieces that you've been gravitating towards, it is time to make a declutter. And though for me, it was an easy thing to do, it was my first major declutter and I parted ways with 90% of my wardrobe, I understand it's not as easy to some. Sometimes we put sentimental values to some pieces because it reminds us of certain time in our lives and or people. I had three closets full of clothes I wasn't wearing and one day I got tired and I wanted to combine those three closets into one and I did. I put it in boxes for a season and I lived off that 10% and I was okay with that and once I figure out you know six months later that I did not need those pieces that were stored away then I parted ways with them I wore that 10% that I capped and I took mental notes of what I was wearing the most and what I liked about them how they made me feel and then I made a wish list which is habit number three a wish list just what it sounds like, a list of items that you wish to have that help minimize impulse buying and keep track of those things that you are missing in your wardrobe. When I first started building my wardrobe, my wish list was long. Nowadays, it might be five, six items there, which I update a few times a year. A lot of times I change my mind certain items and I ended up completely removing them, which is why it's good to have a wish list because we might think we want something in the moment, whether we get influenced through social media or if you like me, like to browse because you are bored or you're going through some emotions. Even if you have a small closet, there are a lot of tools that you can use to make the best of your space. I'll link some down below. But when I first started this three years ago, I had a very small closet. I wanted to make sure that everything was nice and organized and that I didn't have the extra space to just clutter with more things. So organization is key when you're trying to start rebuilding your wardrobe and keep things nice and clean and clear and easy to get ready in the morning. It's just another plus. Taking care of your clothes in general is huge, but especially if you make a big decluttering and like me, you kept only two pairs of denims, but you wear denims almost every day, two things will happen. One, you're not going to wash your denims every time you wear them, which I don't unless I sweat or get a stain on it. Or two, you're going to wash them every time you wear them and that's not really good for the environment or for the denims. <laughs> and though a faded wash vintage look on denims is a thing, you might not get the exact cool look that you look for. Learning how to get off your clothes, reading the labels, making sure that you wash them in general the least amount of time. Some things you just have to steam them, some materials like merino wool, they don't have to be washed even if you sweat on them as much. And so learning all these things ahead of time is a huge help to preserving the clothes they already own and it's all good for not only the environment but also for your wallet. Going with the same idea of taking care of those clothes that you kept, it is very important that whatever it is that you bring you into your wardrobe is high quality. It does not have to be expensive, not everything that's expensive equals quality. But read the labels and try to buy breathable, sustainable materials that are not going to make you sweat cold or itchy. I have very minimal synthetic materials on my wardrobe, especially if it's going to go directly on my skin. Most of my items are made of cotton, linen, and natural fibers like wool and cashmere. I understand cotton is one of the most affordable and natural fiber that you can get in your clothing. And it is what made the majority of my wardrobe when I first started rebuilding it and doing my style do over. But after a while, when I felt more comfortable, I started dabbling in the world of wool and cashmere and silk. And though it is more expensive, I think it's totally worth it. I still have, three years later, my wool and cashmere sweaters in my silk dress. 
yes, you're gonna make a big purchase from time to time. In the long run, you're gonna have a more sustainable, in general, better looking and high quality wardrobe. If you have an idea of what your style is and always hit it, I do have a video coming up talking about the key pieces that make the foundation of my wardrobe, so stay tuned for that. For example, one of the pieces that I talk about in this video is this luxurious color from the Curated. I love this piece. I have worn it to death. I bought it four years ago. It's made in wool cashmere. It feels like butter on the skin. It makes me feel so luxurious. Like it tons of compliments every time I wear it. I wear it almost every day as when I start getting cold. And yes, I paid a lot of money or what it felt like a lot of money at that time in my life. Uh, but I have it for four years. It's cost for wear has gotten really low and I have it for more years to come. And so yes, you know you do invest on this kind of pieces but you have it for decades especially if you take care of your clothing last but not least experiment and have fun i don't care for fancy cars what i drive as long as it take me to and from work which is fine i don't care for fancy dinners fashion and style is my thing it's what brings me joy every morning i get to put an outfit together whether it's to work or to stay at home it makes me happy obviously but just buy everything you want because priorities you will make mistakes because i made tons of those but because i bought mostly quality i was able to resell those pieces but also i bought second hand so you can buy second hand vintage one is more affordable to a house environment and three it's gonna be a unique piece when you get a vintage because not everybody's gonna have the same I hope you found these tips helpful. If you have any, please let me know down below. Thank you so much for 5k. I can't believe we made it to this milestone. Please let me know what kind of videos are your favorite videos to watch from me and or if you have any new ideas. It will really help me out as I continue to plan for the rest of the year. And I'll see you next time.